Hey Pokemon fans, Tamashi here. Today I'm going to talk about something everyone loves, shiny Pokemon. Even though shiny Pokemon are basically just a recolor of regular Pokemon, they don't have better stats, they don't come with any special moves or abilities, they're just regular old Pokemon that sparkle a little. They're still highly coveted among trainers, and some people will do anything to get their hands on one. You can get them in the wild just by chance. In past generations, you had a 1 in 8,192 chance of stumbling across one, but in X and Y, that chance has supposedly been increased, making it a little bit easier than before. However, there are a few things you can do to improve your chances of finding one even more. So today, I'm going to be detailing three ways you can get a shiny Pokemon in X and Y. Personally, I think it's the most fun when you stumble across one by chance, but it can be just as rewarding if you put in the effort to find one deliberately. And sometimes you just want a snazzy, special, shiny version of your favorite. So hold on to your quick balls, kids. Let's get shiny hunting. Method 1. The Masuda Method The Masuda Method, named such because it was first hinted at by Junichi Masuda on his blog, is actually pretty simple. All you have to do is put a Pokemon of a different national origin than the copy of the game you're playing on in the daycare with a Pokemon from your own region, and this will bump the chances of the offspring hatching shiny up to 1 in 818. How can you tell it's from a different country? If you view its status screen, it will have a little abbreviation visible right here that tells you where it's from. If it doesn't have that abbreviation, it means it was caught in the same region your game is from. So, just pop two Pokemon of different national origin in the daycare and start breeding for shinies. You don't need to worry about what country your foreign Pokemon is from. It also still works regardless of what items the Pokemon in the daycare are holding and regardless of whether or not the Pokemon have foreign characters in their name. How do you get a foreign Pokemon? The GTS is one way. But honestly, I found tons on Wonder Trade, so they're pretty easy to come by. Every time an egg is spawned in the Masuda method, the game will make extra attempts to spawn a shiny Pokemon, which means every single egg has the exact same chance of containing a shiny Pokemon. This means that there's no guaranteed number of eggs you'll need to go through before you hatch a shiny one. On my first attempt at Masuda methoding, I got a shiny Esper in 330 eggs. When Justin tried it, he got a shiny Solosis in under 30 eggs. For this demonstration, I hatched a whopping 1,200 eggs before I got my shiny Bulbasaur. And of course, I wasn't recording when it hatched. Bummer. This method might require a lot of patience, but it's still the most popular among shiny hunters, because you also have the opportunity to customize your Pokemon's IVs, nature, ability, and egg moves through breeding while you breed for a shiny Pokemon. If you don't care about IVs or any of that stuff, it's still the most passive way to increase your chances of getting a shiny Pokemon. So give it a try and may Masuda be with you. Method 2. Pokeradar It's funny how just a few little changes can make a feature go from convenient to frustrating. The Pokeradar, first introduced in Generation 4, has returned for X and Y, but it's not quite as useful as it was in the past. You can get it after you beat the game on the second floor of Professor Sycamore's lab in Lumio City. Here's how it works. First, you'll want to stock up on repels, and find a big patch of grass. Most people agree that in Kalos, the best patch to try it on is this big one on Route 5. The patch must not have any holes in it, and it has to be pretty big too. Before you begin, you'll probably want to register the Poker Radar to the Y button, and unregister anything else you may have registered. Do not use your roller skates at any time during this process. Just stick to the D-pad. Now, activate a repel, step into the grass, and activate the radar. You'll see some patches of grass rustling, and hear the music change. You'll probably want to have your sound on for this, because the music cues will help you know when you've broken your chain. If the Poker Radar music stops and the regular route music comes on, your chain is broken. You'll need to start over. Occasionally, the Poker Radar will play different music, and no one seems to know why yet, but since your chain isn't broken when it comes on, you don't need to worry. Find the fastest shaking patch of grass and step into it to start your chain. You must defeat every single Pokemon you run into, if you run away from it, it will break your chain and you'll have to start over. The goal here is to find the same species of Pokemon with the radar over and over and over again in a row, otherwise known as chaining that Pokemon, until one of the shaking patches starts shining. Once you see it, you should walk into it right away, because the shining patches contain shiny Pokemon. Once the battle ends, immediately more patches of grass will shake. You need to be very careful about which shaking patches of grass you walk into. If you walk into any on the edge of the patch of grass, you will most likely break your chain. If you walk into any that are shaking right next to each other, you will probably break your chain. If you walk into any that are within four squares of you, you will probably break your chain. If you run into any that are not shaking fast enough, you will probably break your chain. If a Pokemon you have with you tries to evolve, or if an egg hatches, it will break your chain. And sometimes, the chain will just end for no reason. If you happen to run into one of the legendary birds while using the radar, they at least will not break your chain. Sometimes, none of the patches that are shaking will be usable. 
So what should you do? Step out of the grass and walk 50 steps, then step back into the grass and hit the Y button to use the radar again. This is called resetting, and it just gives you a few more patches of grass to choose from without breaking your chain. You might need to reset your radar multiple times in a row before you find a patch of grass that will work. If you think you saw a good one but you weren't sure, reset anyway. You can never be too careful. The good news is, if you get a chain of 40, you can just walk around and reset your radar over and over again until you find a shiny patch. Honestly, this is probably the most frustrating process in the whole game, and I've never managed to get a chain of more than 20. It requires a lot of concentration, and I don't recommend it. Given how few patches of grass in the game are actually conducive to the radar, there are very, very few Pokemon you can get a shiny of this way, and it's a lot more trouble than it's worth. Method 3. Chain Fishing. This method is new to X and Y, and it's a lot of fun even if there are a very limited number of shiny Pokemon you can get this way. First, you'll need a Pokemon with a Suction Cups or Sticky Hold ability in the front of your party. Next, you'll want to register your Rod of Choice to the Y button, and unregister everything else. I prefer the Good Rod, because generally, unevolved Pokemon have a higher catch rate, which makes the whole thing less stressful. Now, just pick a spot you want to fish, and hit Y to cast your Rod. Suction Cups and Sticky Hold will guarantee you'll get an encounter every time. So just make sure you reel them in consistently, and pay attention so you don't mess up or miss any fish. Unlike the Poker Radar, here you can run from Pokemon without breaking your chain, and you can run into different species of Pokemon without breaking your chain. There's also no music to indicate when you're chaining at all, and no number of chain fish you need to try and get. Just stand at the same spot without moving, and make sure you land a fish every time, and eventually you'll get a shiny fish. When this happens is pretty inconsistent. Some people find it after 4 fish, some people find it after 140. I've pretty consistently found them between 15 and 30, but it might just be luck. Chain fishing is the most rewarding and low effort time investment way to get a shiny Pokemon. But on the flip side, since there are so few shinies you can get this way, and since they are so easy to get, they're flooding the GTS and are losing some of their value. Still, it's my favorite of all the shiny methods. And of course, I couldn't resist a shiny Sharpedo. Go land yourself a big one! I hope this little guide was helpful, and maybe some of you will get your first shiny this way. Let me know if you're able to find any shiny Pokemon. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to click here to subscribe for more Pokemon videos. See ya!